Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. everybody, Rob and Janelle Alex here. We are actually filling in for Dr. Martha today. We're honored to get to do that. Been guests on the show, though it's been quite a while. Yeah. And we were honored to, uh, to come on today and fill in for her. So very quickly, um, we're going to be talking about the connection between traveling and lovemaking. Couples often travel together. And of course, Rob and I are actually traveling entrepreneurs, so we travel with our youngest son full time. <laughs> Um, but whether, you know, couples travel, whether they're traveling for business or pleasure, but what they probably don't realize is that traveling offers unique opportunities for them to experience spiritual transitions in their lives. So there's a powerful link between traveling and lovemaking, not to mention that a shaman from the Dagara tribe in Africa has been known to have said that having sex is going on a journey together. How beautiful is that? So during today's show, you're going to learn how you and your partner can enhance your sex life, your spiritual life, and your travel journey. So again, Rob and I are traveling entrepreneurs. Uh, we teach numerous online classes. Um, we do a lot of work with entrepreneurs and authors as well as with couples around the world. I'm a writing coach for women, and of course, Rob, here's the exciting part, is the original creator of Sexy Challenges, Yay. and that is a big <laughs> part of what we have been on here and talked about um, with Martha before. Sexy Challenges, and we've written Intimate Adventures, as well as the Mission Date Night series, uh, Adventures, so lots of great stuff, um, and we want to get into this conversation today because I don't think that most people realize that travel can be a spiritual experience. Obviously, you guys are listening to the show, so you have some inclination that spirituality and sexuality can go hand in hand and do, but how does travel come into that? Well, not only that, travel and lovemaking are two of the most popular things in the world. I mean, people <laughs> just love those two things. And a lot of times we put them together. Think of your honeymoons and your, if you take a special trip with your sweetie, you know, you kind of blend those things together. But there's more to it than that. It's not just on those rare occasions where the two of you can get off by yourself that you can um, focus the spiritual energy into both your travel and your lovemaking. Well, when you're traveling – Travel in of itself actually offers opportunities for transformation because you're going to experience new places. I mean, unless you're traveling back to the same place, which that, you know, sometimes we do that. That's true. But you have this potential to be experiencing new things, new places, new people, new energy around you, um, just, just new, those new experiences. And that opens the door on a vibrational level and on an energetic level for transformation to occur. Sometimes we physically have some transformation. You know, maybe you go to a higher elevation or you go to a warmer climate or suddenly you're in a colder place. And so you'll have some physical changes as well. But if you'll take a moment and step back, you'll realize that there are mental changes and transformations, emotional ones, as well as spiritual ones. Well, and one of the big things here is it gets you out of your comfort zone. It gets that you out of your rut, if you will. If you're in the same place all the time, going to the same job, working the nine to five, coming home, and maybe you even have a um, intimacy night where it's Saturday night, and that's when, when you make love. But this allows you to branch out. This allows you to, you know, break out of that comfort zone and just go wild with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember when Rob and I actually were getting ready to kick off our big traveling lifestyle. That, um, well, I say it like it's huge, but just it was a big deal to us. Yes, it is. To deal. go from having grown up in a small town, Midwestern community, very, um, well, it was only within a couple of hours of the Bible Belt. So very rigid Christian values that surrounded us as we grew up. And that just didn't fit us. We knew that that didn't make sense to either of us. Um, but we, you know, so we were in our 40s before we even initially 
moved from there. I mean, we traveled, but to move and to actually stay away on a permanent basis, we were, you know, we'd spent quite a few decades there. So that journey to move was a huge transformation for us. And we moved um, at that time, that first big move, we were only about 20 minutes outside of Boulder, Colorado in the U.S., which is a very spiritual community and much more open-minded. So that was an interesting experience and a huge transformation and just being away from family and our friends we'd grown up with. So that offered this transformation on so many levels. Then when you realize that you have this different energy and this different place that you're in and you can embrace your lovemaking with your partner in this new place, you could be absolutely surprised at what might come from that. And I know, so what I was saying is when we started off on this travel journey, um, you know, traveling full time, literally, <laughs> um, our, one of our guides, because we have a couple of main spirit guides that come through to us, and the message came through that the traveling that we were getting ready to undertake was going to start a transformation again within our relationship and with us individually. Yeah, and I think this so often you hear that, that when a couple travels or goes like Janelle said, well, we moved across the country together. We didn't know anybody when we moved to Colorado. We were just there. You know, it was just us, our family. So we really had to rely on each other and in most cases, it allows you to grow closer. To get gets your um, energies closer together than they probably have ever been before. I hear this a lot of the um, the couples that I knew that were in the military or something like that, and they moved around a lot. They didn't get to know a lot of people, but they they formed a strong bond within themselves that carries on to this day. Well, I, another thing that I found sad as well as fascinating. As we have traveled to a variety of different places, <laughs> obviously we're in a different bed in all those different places, and it has been kind of shocking almost how we'll be, both of us will be like, wow, um, it's hard to get to each other in the middle of the bed because there's kind of a hump in the bed. You, it's very <laughs> evident that even um, at some of the vacation spots that we've stayed, that people haven't clearly come together in the center of their bed. Um, so it, it's sad to think that, wow, are couples missing out on this fantastic opportunity to be together when they're not at home? Or is it just that they're not together at all? You know, there's ruts, if you will, in the bed. It's like, oh, you're over here and you're over here and there's a hill between <laughs> us. And, you know, so it's like, well, I guess you need to work on flattening the middle out. <laughs> Well, yeah, and there's so many factors that go. If you're traveling for pleasure and you're traveling with your family, you, you need to think about those things before you go. Are you or Do you have a separate bedroom for yourself? Um, are you not going to be able to? I mean, is it a studio type of setup to where you can't really get any privacy? Mm -hmm. So you need to think about those things, and I highly recommend that you find some place, if, if possible, that has a separate bedroom to where you guys can get alone and experience this amazing energy that's going to be all around you as you're traveling. You know, I want to go back for a moment um, to this concept of being on a journey mm -hmm. during lovemaking with your partner. So for those of you that have perhaps experienced a or rather I should say had a transcendent experience or a spiritual experience during lovemaking. And of course, I know Rob and I have talked so many times about how there's an infinite really number of ways that that can transpire. But if you have had one of those moments during lovemaking that has felt either maybe an out of body experience or a sense of the void or just this unbelievable sense of bliss, or felt like you're, you transformed into a, a different being. There's all those, some of those can get really woo-woo <laughs> and really crazy feeling. But that is a journey. And that's actually your soul in that sense, traveling. So when you just relate that to us here on the earth plane, traveling to a different location, and you, when you get to do that with your partner, now we're going to talk later here in the show about when we have to travel apart from each other. We do want to talk about that because that's actually amazing as well. But when you get to travel together with your partner, you have opportunity right in front of you. It's in the palm of your hand 
to experience a different level of transformation and transcendence. Yeah, and if you think about when you do travel, a lot of times people pick up trinkets, souvenirs, mm -hmm. if you want to call them that, and you can do the same thing with your lovemaking. You can pick up amazing energies at all these spots that you stop throughout your journey and add that energy into your your own personal energy and to your blended spirit, as we call it, that is your couple's energy. It is that sexual energy that connects the two of you. Right. I mean, because your sexual energy is your creative energy. That is the life force, mm -hmm. right? I think we all here know that. We all get that. That's what gives us the new ideas. That's what supports us. That's what gives us more confidence um, to help us go out in the world and to face challenges and, and all those pieces. It's so vital, um, not just for one partner, but for both, because both men and women um, need that, that support, if you will, from that aspect of the relationship. On, again, on that physical level, sure, but also it really does uplift your spiritual level and your spiritual self. It helps it deal with the human challenges that we face because we do face a lot of them. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, the whole world faces lots of them at lots of them at different times. So when you go to a different location, whether you're staying at a hotel, again, whether it's a business trip or perhaps you have intentionally taken a, a vacation or a trip to get away, Maybe it even is a retreat, something particular to work on a time uh, on your relationship. So no matter what that is, oh, we're going to have to come back to that. Here yep. comes the music. We'll be right back. <laughs> Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi. I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by Rain and this station. And we're back. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> so again, we are Rob and Janelle Alex filling in for Dr. Martha today. And we've been talking about the connection between travel and lovemaking and how that's really a spiritual, um, it's an opportunity for spiritual growth and spiritual transformation. So what we were talking about right before the break really had to do with experiencing new places and my, where my mind was going was when you go into a new place, um, whether it's a, a, you know, a retreat place, of, um, what am I trying to say, a hotel, fine, but it might even be a vacation home somewhere that you've rented or a condo or who knows, right? There's an energy there from whoever's been there previously. So your lovemaking could actually help kind of cleanse 
that energy if there happened to have been any negative energy. If a couple or someone else that has been there has had an argument or just hasn't had a good um, energy about them or something to that effect, they can leave those traces behind. So when you and your partner can come together and leave a beautiful trail of sexual energy behind, think about that wonderful feeling that others in the area, other people that come into that, um, again, whatever type of lodging that is, um, when they come into that space, there's this beautiful energy left behind. So the two of you can leave this phenomenal trail of positive, creative, and sexual energy behind. Yeah, and that's that's amazing when you can do that. But I want to I want to jump out here as we're we're traveling and how we're going to soak up that energy from all these places mm-hmm. that we're being. Um, and it doesn't matter where you're at. If you're at the beach, that's a great one. I, we love the beach and we love to get out on the beach and soak up that that atmosphere of the beach, the waves rushing in. And that's energy. That's energy right there. And you can kind of just let yourself feel it and collect it into your body and save that for later. Now, you can do this all at all kinds of places. Maybe you're an amusement park, amusement park type of person and you love the roller coasters. Think of that thrill that you get on the roller coasters and how if you can bring that energy into your lovemaking – Whoa, wow, you're on for a wild ride right there. And not only that, I mean, museums are another great thing, and architecture that's around the city, you know, that is sexy. I'm just going to say it right point blank. It's sexy. When you go see a, an amazing painting, the artist has put his cre- sexual energy into that, his creative energy or her creative energy into that work of art, and you can just soak it up and allow it to enter into your body and take it back with you because now you've witnessed that piece of artwork, that architecture, the beach, that roller coaster, and take it back with you to that place where you're staying and, you know, let that energy just flow out into your bedroom as you prepare to make love to your partner. And beyond that, when you are out in public, perhaps there is some Mm -hmm. hand-holding, that affection, appropriate affection, depending on the location you're (laughs) in. Some places, obviously, cultures um, accept different uh, behavior than others. But you can have appropriate affection, and people will take notice. And so that is still sexual energy, even if it's on the lighter scale, if you will, the softer end of that. So you can share that love energy in that sense and other people see it, they feel it, they will get a little smile. And so you're spreading that positivity in different places. You're spreading, um, you're being a role model and showing how you can respect each other and honor one another in these different places. And I think that is so personally, I just think that's a phenomenal piece and such a beautiful piece to accept. Now that I think also goes beyond just saying, Hey, look, you know, here I am this guy and I'm, you know, I honor my, my lady, but I think it's also so beautiful when you see a same sex couple experiencing that type of love energy, you can see the love between them. Um, so it doesn't matter you know, who the, Rob and I are big advocates of, you know, a couple are two people that love each other. Mm -hmm. They love each other and they have sexual chemistry. They're attracted to each other and they respect and honor each other. There you go. That's a couple. And to see that love and to see that being spread, that energy, that's further transforming themselves and deepening their bond. But then it offers transformation, perhaps unintentionally and inadvertently, to those that they encounter or those that see them even from a distance. Yeah, we're so often taught that a smile is contagious, to smile at people and it's like, you know, the next person smiles, but your sexual energy is the same way. You know, people see you holding hands or being affectionate to each other. It it gets their brain thinking that they almost feed off of the the dopamine and those chemicals Mm -hmm. that are released just by seeing you guys um, acting that way. And it, it does, it starts a chain reaction that is beautiful for this world. We need more of that in this world, actually. You know, I remember, Rob, you actually wrote um, a sexy challenge called Recycled Love. Is that correct? Recycled Love, yeah. yeah. And it had to do with 
really rebuilding, if you will, uh, communities, certain communities, or um, a, a maybe a section of a town, or even just an area within a park or something, and cleaning it up and bringing a new positive energy to that space. And if um, it was appropriate, <laughs> and if it worked out correctly, then perhaps some other couples could all be there. And, and this is not about having um, sexual relations with more than just your partner. But if you camped in the area and there were numerous people that had um, different tents or maybe they stayed in hotels close by in their own rooms, whatever the case may be, but then to focus in even on that space when they are practicing their lovemaking, mm -hmm. when they're having their lovemaking sessions. Or what, another thing that Rob and I do ourselves, and um, I know I think you even have a, a Skillshare class on this, but um, to use a sigil, basically very, very simplified, is just a, a drawn little image that you're going to be putting your focus on, and it represents something else. So if you were having a, an image drawn of this perhaps area, this park, let's say, that you were helping clean up, but you wanted a positive energy to come to that space, then if you and your partner do that, or if there were quite a few people that said, yeah, we all want to do that, then everybody has uh, this opportunity to draw their own little image, their own little sigil, and then over the course of however long, uh, maybe it's all everybody's like, hey, on the 5th of February, we're going to, everybody's going to make love tonight in their own place, wherever you guys are, in the privacy of your own homes or whatever, but you're going to focus that energy towards that space. Yeah. And if you had the sigil drawn up, the image drawn up, it can just, you know, give it a little extra power. Yeah, and I don't think a lot of people know out there that you can focus your sexual energy. It, 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 it takes a little training and a little bit to get it going, but you can focus your sexual energy exactly where you need to go. And your sexual energy is intelligent. It knows where you want it to go. So, you know, you need to be a little specific as where do you want it to go, but your sexual energy knows the overall meaning of where you're sending it and what you're wanting it to do. It's not going to go out there and harm anybody or do any ill, ill-fated things. It's going to go out there and spread more love. Right. I mean, you need to focus on the mm -hmm. positive. Yes. That's very, very important. It is um, – it's really a level of manifestation. So you may hear people talk often about the law of attraction and being able to manifest things. Well, that can happen mm -hmm. absolutely due to lovemaking. So you can focus in on different places and have a different energy, like we've talked about here. Um, maybe you've gone to, like Rob said, and, and seen some art, or maybe you've experienced something that was ancient, some ruins or something, and experienced an energy, a vibrational shift from even being in a space that you know that indigenous cultures or indigenous peoples were there hundreds of years ago. And that can be such a fantastic energy to, if it was a positive place. Obviously, there are some negative things out there, and, and taking back with you um, sad times is not what we're encouraging. But if you can take that amazing, positive, fascinating feeling with you and then share that and kind of focus in on that with your partner and come back together, um, perhaps not even making love. Maybe you just come back together and even share a meditation or sit in yab yum together it could be any of those things, but it's bringing that traveling experience into your relationship and welcoming it into your sexual energy and letting them embrace each other. Yeah. And I think one thing important to note here is that for great lovemaking, for amazing lovemaking, there needs to be some kind of excitement. And when we travel – we get a lot of excitement going on. You know, we're seeing new things, we're trying new things, we're experiencing something different with our partner. So the excitement is there. It's all around you. You just need to learn to uh, bring it into your intimacy and go, wow, let's bring this all this excitement that we're experiencing, this new place, this new thing, this travel, this fun that we're having together, and bring it into our lovemaking. Well, you've got 
different, uh, whole different setup. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, if you want to go that direction as well, um, you have different rooms. You do have uh, a different height to a bed. You have um, different furniture. Different. There's different ways to kind of play with it and allow different experiences. Yes, um, <laughs> or if you are traveling with other individuals, then you're like, oh, this is a little bit more challenging. Maybe you do need to be quieter than perhaps you might be. Um, those types of things just to kind of keep, you know, so you keep it private. Um, But whatever that case is, right, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever it is. Embrace that difference because it truly can be this big, big shift. And I I just think that this is a place that um, we want you to think about. The next time that you travel together, when we come back here in a few moments, we're going to start talking about traveling separately because we know as partners we often have to do that. But when you get to travel together, then be ready for and embrace this opportunity to experience a transcendent um, peace, a transcendent moment, not only within your lovemaking, but within that traveling experience, within that physical journey of going to a new space. And being in those new locations and absorbing these different energies that you can find around you, even in these different cultures, even, right? Right. Well, we're so often here that we need to try something new in our relationship to keep it spiced up. And travel allows you to do that right from the get-go because you're going. You're going to force yourself to experience new things because the same restaurants aren't going to be there. The same um, attractions aren't going to be there. You're going to see different things constantly while you're on this journey. And that's that excitement piece. That's that bringing something different into your lovemaking, making it more and more and more exciting. And I want you to think for a moment as well, because we're talking about travel, and so many people think, travel, it's expensive. Well, there's ways for it not to be expensive. And one of those ways is for you not to travel, you know, thousands of miles away from home. Just go to the next town over. Go stay in your own community if need be, but at least you can go and stay maybe one night, uh, you know, someplace different. Um, So there's different ways to do that, but we'll be back in just a few moments. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Susan Schuler. And I'm Lori Walker. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Tune in every week at 10 a.m. Eastern on OhmTimesRadio.com. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Bathe in the beautiful vibrational frequency to help you heal, expand, and remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. What's up? This is Brad and Mike from Lincoln Park for Life Beat, the music industry fights AIDS. Listen up, times are tough and you get a lot of things thrown your way. If you're being pressured to have sex and you're not ready, then say no. If you're having sex, be smart and use protection. Respect yourself and protect yourself. For more information, call the National AIDS Hotline at 1-800-342-AIDS or log on to www.lifebeat.org. Hey everybody, we're back. And but before we get into the rest of the show here and talking about traveling and intimacy and lovemaking and sex and all that great stuff, we have a free gift for you. Go over to sexychallenges.com and click on the free sexy challenge and pick that up. 
it's going to be a wonderful experience for you. So I want to get on with the show, but I wanted to give that to all the people that are listening out there. Yep. It's in what is in the tab, I think, yes. towards the top. So um, we promised, though, that we would also talk about how this can actually work for you when you travel apart. Because we do. We often have to travel away from each other. Um, sometimes that actually happens more than we get to travel together. It really depends on what our jobs are, um, what we do, and what kind of work we do in the world. So um, I want to I want to talk about that. But you know, in fact, I want to expand on that because this could actually be really beneficial for those that may have a partner that maybe you don't even live together at this point. You may live miles and miles, thousands possibly miles away from each other. I know um, it's been a while ago, but I remember uh, a young lady reaching out to Rob and um, and asking that, saying, "Oh my gosh, you know, my partner change and growth are part of natural across the, the ocean, you know, thousands and thousands of miles away from each other, and you know, how can we experience um, travel? How can that travel piece work well for us when we're together, but when we're apart? So let's talk about that a little bit, um, because you know, some of us are really independent souls." And, and out of Rob and I, I'm the more independent. I like to go off on my own. <laughs> well, I like to go off on my own, too. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's I, I have that um, natural tendency to just be a little bit more, um, you know, I really like that piece. And that's okay. So I think that's an important thing to understand as well. But... We have, I, I put together uh, a while back, actually, an entire intimate adventure series, and there's three parts to it, um, but it all has to do with travel when you have to travel away from each other. So if you know that that's going to be the case, then you could do a ceremony with your partner prior to whichever partner is going to be traveling. Now, within that ceremony, you could, I recommend that you find some sort of an object, choose some sort of an object. Um, you know, it might be, I know Rob mentioned a little, like a little trinket or one of the, uh, the little, I know they're called worry stones often, but um, I think we have a, a little blue heart that mm -hmm. is just barely um, kind of fits in the palm of your hand. And it's easy enough to drop it into a pocket and carry it with you all the time. But whatever would make sense. And Bring that in and have that with each other and hold that. And each of you hold that during a time that you can have quiet time and be very focused on placing loving, warm energy into this item. Then, um, you know, make love and, again, try to send that energy into that item. And it just, you know, it's just coming from the mental thought. So it's just... Um, trusting and believing that that energy is going to go into that item. Then when the partner that needs to travel travels the next day or the next you know, week, whenever that is that he or she leaves, they can take that item with them and feel that energy continually with them as they're in a different location. They can still hang on to it and feel that energy. Yeah, and I, there's another um, tactic that I often use with this, and when Janelle goes away or anything like that, um, where I will drop hints that I love her. Um, I'll put a note in a pair of her jeans that she's going to be wearing or a pair of her pants that she's going to be wearing on that trip. Um, and you can do this in reverse, too. It doesn't necessarily have to be the person that's leaving that gets the notes stuck into there. You know, you can leave notes for your partner in their drawer so they find them after you're gone. And these are representations of your love and they will make your partner's heart just beat a little bit faster when they find this and know that you would, were thoughtful enough to try to share some love with them while you're apart. Be mindful, a little tiny disclaimer, be mindful of what you put on um, that, uh, what you might say or what you might write um, if you're doing something <clears throat> And to that, uh, which is a great piece. I think it's amazing. But I remember on one occasion, um, thankfully, Rob was always very cautious and respectful. And I think it was basically just something like, I love you, you're beautiful, or something like that. But, uh, you know, I'm in the middle of a business seminar, and I happened to slide my hand into <laughs> that front pocket of my slacks. 
And I was like, what is that? I didn't put anything in my pocket. And I pulled it out. And in the circle of women I was standing there speaking with, and they, of course, were like, oh, because I had a love note unexpectedly from him. But, you know, that can feed anticipation. It can um, further the bond so that you have that deeper connection so that when you do come back together, then that sexual experience, like I said, there could have been anticipation or it just deepened the bond and you feel even more loved. And that works on both sides. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, Rob is sitting here saying, oh, I do this for Janelle. So it's the guy doing it for her. But here's the deal. That can work in reverse because, Rob, doesn't that make you guys feel I don't, you tell me, how does that make you guys feel? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Oh, well, it makes me feel great. If I'd find something like that, I'd just be like ecstatic. I mean, it would really lighten up my day. And it wouldn't matter if I was having a great day or a bad day. It would still make my day brighter and more amazing finding something like that. I think um, with the guys, a lot of times there's this sense of confidence. You know, you feel a little bit more secure that your partner is like, yeah, you know, you're thinking of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and that goes both ways. Yes. You know, for women, uh, it might make us feel um, respected and honored and more beautiful. Um, so there's lots of different ways to think of that. And like Rob said, I want to point that out again, that the person that is traveling that actually has to leave, if you've left some love notes for the person that stayed back home, that's really, really even more going to increase and, and um, heighten that sense of, wow, they're thinking of me and they're not even here. Um, and I know they're busy, but they thought of me. They wanted me to know while they were gone that they were actually going to be thinking of me So and feeling my energy. So there's beautiful ways that you can expand on that. And really, um, you could even sit down and create some of these little notes together with intention. While you're doing this little ceremony that I spoke of um, with an object that you are embedding, if you will, with your love energy and your sexual energy that you can share. And, and I know I said one object, but you could have two objects and one that mm -hmm. stays back home, keeps it, and the other one that travels takes one with them. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful thing to do, a wonderful practice to get started. If you haven't done anything like that to this point, it's a wonderful practice just to keep that connectivity, not like you guys drift apart when you're, you know, separated or anything, but, you know, it's just that visual representation of the love that you guys are sharing because that person's not right there sitting across from you at the dinner table or um, in bed with you at night. So it's that visual representation of your love, and I think that's powerful, and everybody should use it. <laughs> well, and I think, too, that it's also a great tool to – apply to your relationship, even when you're not having a great spot in your relationship. So when you're having one of those times, because we all do, where things are a little rocky, things just don't feel quite as secure as you would like them to be, then if you put this into place and take the time and the effort to do a little ceremony, uh, whatever you want to call that, before the travel has to happen, then that can, yes, again, it can help further the bond. It could deeper, deepen the bond. It could start to repair some of the relationship. It could help rebuild some of the bridge between the two of you. But it can also just help support that, like, oh, you know, it, it's not just completely, hey, out of sight, out of mind. Because that's not always the case. If you have a good relationship or if the two of you are wanting to reclaim a healthy uh, relationship, not just the romantic side of it, but the sexual side of it, then you don't want just that, hey, when I don't see you, I don't even think of you. You want those, both of you need to be like, hey, you actually think of each other at times. Not all the time. We get that. <laughs> we have our own lives to lead as well. But you want to be able to think of each other. And that's a great way to do that. You may feel that. If it's something you can carry in your pocket, then you can feel, um, you know, that little trinket or whatever. And, or when you go to um, get undressed and climb into bed at night, you go, oh, and you take it out of your pocket and lay it on the, the dresser or whatnot. So it just helps you kind of regain um, some of that peace that you may otherwise not have. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. It's a beautiful part of the ceremony that Janelle was talking about, about doing, um, connecting 
and having that visual representation, you know, it's and it's great for all kinds of couples, whether you're the lovey-dovey couple or you're not so lovey-dovey, um, whatever you're, you know, you can make it fit to what your relationship is all about. Now, another thing that you could do with the travel, and I know we're going to be edging up here before yeah, long I'm on, a, on the <laughs> last break, but um, think about maybe there is something that the two of you are wanting to manifest. Maybe you're wanting to be able to manifest that that bigger vacation or buying your dream home or I don't know, something. Those seem very kind of materialistic ideas, but um, there's something. Maybe it's a healing or maybe it is a repair of the relationship. Whatever it is that you're really wanting to have actually come into being, then make that an overall focus of this particular travel experience. So again, this this particular time I'm talking about when you're traveling apart. So going into this first ceremony before, the before one of you travels, then that's what you could focus on. Put a lot of focus on manifesting, creating that particular thing that you're wanting to bring into being. So again, maybe it's like, oh, I want to manifest a trip to, uh, I don't know, Fiji, I don't know, <laughs> something, right? Yeah. So that's, and then we'll share um, some more uh, thoughts and so forth as we wrap up in a bit here um, on how to do that when you are apart as well as when you come back together. Right, and the focus of the trip might even be what you're um, going to manifest. I know at one point I had to leave and go on a trip to um, get interviewed for a position with a company. Mm -hmm. And so we could focus that energy on getting that job or maybe somebody's going to look for a house for you guys in a different location that you're getting you move, ready to move to. So the, it can be very specific of what you're focusing that energy and that amazing lovemaking towards. Yeah, and by the way, he did get that position because we did do a ceremony yes, before he did. flew out. Um, and it was a, the synchronicities and the spiritual components that showed up were blatantly obvious and mind-boggling. Yes, they were. <laughs> the human mind was like, what? It was very, uh, very fascinating. But, you know, then later we said, oh, look, we could have also then done these other two pieces that we'll talk about here in a few moments. And it was, you know, it just expands. It just further gives it more power, I guess you could say. You mm -hmm. know, it just builds up on top of itself. You know, you just keeps building and building and building and gaining more momentum and more power. So we'll be right back. the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Join me, Tammy Adams, intuitive life coach and spiritual healer, for my new show, Karma Talk. Learn how to get rid of your karma so that you can start living the life you are meant to live. I am not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Join me on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time for Karma Talk on Calm Time Radio. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org.
Wow, it's crazy. We're in the last little segment here. It's went so fast, but we've got a lot more to cover, so I don't want to take up too much time here. So, <laughs> No, I want to get into um, this piece. Um, and for some reason, if you've just joined in, by the way, we are Rob and Janelle Alex. We're just filling in for Dr. Martha today. So just in case you're like, huh, who are you guys? <laughs> you sound different. Um, but we've been talking about how travel and lovemaking are actually connected and how both can actually offer you transformation, especially when you combine the two. So at the first time, you know, the first half of the show, we talked about traveling together mm -hmm. as a couple, but we've been talking about um, here in the last half about traveling apart. And we gave you a couple of ideas on uh, maybe doing a little ceremony um, when one of you is going to travel and the other one's not. Or maybe you're going to travel to two different locations. That could even be the case. But what about when you are apart, when you have arrived in those separate locations or perhaps you don't live together anyways, you live farther away from each other? How can you use that, that um, distance, and that travel in that sense combined with lovemaking. Yeah, and we get into a, a little bit of that more metaphysical approach, more spiritual approach here. Um, this is very strong in there. As we start to talk about um, astral lovemaking, um, I, a lot of you have probably heard of astral projection where you can visit different places um, while still being in your, in your um, home your, your soul, your spirit, however you want to look at it, will go out and experience amazing things. Well, you can do this with lovemaking, too, with your partner. You can meet up in that astral realm and make love to your partner. So to practice that, obviously, you would need to practice and learn how to do astral projection or astral travel. Um, so... If that is either something you're like, well, I don't know how to do that, and I want to practice this today with my partner because, you know, she's, you know, so, you know, she's someplace different than I am right now, and I want to try this, then there is a different way to do it. You could just do, whether you call it a meditation or just sitting quietly um, at the same time and just focusing in on each other. But let's say that you guys come to an agreement like, hey, at the same time, so, Let's say it's 9 o'clock Eastern and, or excuse me, um, 11 p.m. Eastern and, and 9 o'clock uh, Mountain Time. Let's just say that that would be the case. Uh, and, of course, those are American times, but <laughs> American time zones. But, um, you know, those are, um, let's just say those are the places you happen to be in. So you agree that at those times, at that 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that you're going to either meditate or lie down, sit down, whatever, and think about each other. And you can decide how you want to do that. Do you want that to be just things that you love about each other? Or do you want to think about that uh, and focus in a sexual way? So that has to be something that you come to an agreement on. But then see what comes up. See what um, information, what experience you might have. I know the first time that Rob and I did this, and I, I would have to pull out my notes, um, which I don't know where they are right now since we travel all the time. <laughs> I don't know where those are um, from that experience. But I remember it was not what I expected. Right. And there was, um, yeah, see, it's because it's, it's been the first time was many years ago now. But it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic and what you might get from that. And then to be able to text or have a phone call or email, whatever, afterwards, and share what you each experienced from that, what your experience was. See if there are any correlations. Did anything connect? Did you have any similarities in that experience? Yeah, and a big thing when you go into that experience is don't set expectations that this is going to happen. Just allow yourself to feel what happens, to experience whatever comes. It might not be um, something amazing. It might just be a little tingle, or um, it might you might get a smell or something that comes across. Don't expect it to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have this astral orgasm. Um, Which you just, can, you but can that may do, not be the but case. But that, that you know that's a, that's an extreme example of how you can do this, but. 
you know, with a little training, a little practice, you can work your way up to that. But don't go into it thinking that that's what you're going to get and then be like, oh, disappointed because you didn't get that. See, this, that's an example, though, of practicing non-attachment. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that we should always be practicing in, I want to say in our sexual relationship, but really in the way that each other loves, loves each other. There are certain levels, right, of um, expectations that we have. And there, of course, there are deal breakers in relationships. But overall, if we have this piece of non-attachment and for practicing non-attachment, then we have a goal and a destination that we're hoping to reach together um, or a continued expansion to reach, you know, to continue on. <laughs> um, but it's not that it has to be exactly this way, because if you expect that, you'll probably be sadly disappointed. Yeah. So now when you put this together, if you put this together with the first ceremony, so if you were able to be together in a space and, uh, and do the first ceremony and have this item that you've taken with you that you were and you're able to have them perhaps in this other location, then you could be holding that in your hand mm -hmm. as you do this mutual meditation, if you will. Or, you know, if you're going to, again, simultaneously do an astral travel. And you could have that item. I know in the intimate adventure I wrote for this, I actually talked about um, having a, uh, a travel, um, what the heck am I trying to say? <laughs> um, a um, uh, what am I? What am I trying to say? Why am I drawing a total blank? Um, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's hilarious. Wow, guys, you know that happens sometimes. We go, oh, I don't know what I'm saying. I totally forgot. Um, that's hilarious. I totally cannot. An altar. Oh my gosh, it's such a simple thing. <laughs> it was totally gone from my brain. All right, that happens. Um, but you can have a travel altar. <laughs> I'm still laughing at myself because I couldn't think of what it's called. Um, so that you can actually take that with you and maybe you'll have some other items that might have a picture of your loved one or have, um, you know, a, a little note or something, right? There may be other things that you can to have with that. Then if you experience these and you do the third piece, so you have the ceremony at the beginning where you have this focus on being apart and putting this energy into something. Then when you're apart, um, maybe you have gone to soak up some of that energy we talked about um, in the first half of the show and brought some of that positive energy from this other location that you're at. Then, um, when, and you do this mutual meditation, then when you get to come back together and have that reunion, if you will, <laughs> then you can bring that item back in and you can have another um, kind of a, either, again, whether it's a mutual meditation, even though you're together, or it's a rip your clothes off moment, or, like <laughs> or it's uh, even just maybe you're exhausted and tired from the travel. And so maybe you just sit together, or maybe you do sit in yab yam, but you bring that energy then back and those experiences back into that final step, if you will, that going away, being apart, and then coming back together. Yeah, and I think, you know, we the, the third part there, that coming back together probably seems pretty obvious, but we want to put that more spiritual, that more ceremonial um, effect into it, too, um, so that we can end it on the same way we began it, and so that this time frame that you guys were apart takes on this whole spiritual practice and this whole amazing session of event, sets of events that you've experienced during this time can blend together, you know, have a beginning, have an end, have that wonderful time in the middle, and you can enjoy it all in the same fashion. And I, I want you to think, let's go back to what we talked about in the first half of the show as far as traveling together. So you could still do these types of ceremonies when you're going to be traveling together. Because you could travel, you could have a focus on a safe travel. Yes on finding some really amazing energy, on having a fantastic um, shift as you travel. Then when you're in this other place, it would be a little different, right? Because you're going to be together. So you can look at it a little bit differently. You can experience it in a different way. You can either be together sexually or 
you could just have kind of a mutual meditation in that sense. And it doesn't have to be meditation. It's just the example I'm using. Um, maybe it's just sitting quietly and, I don't know, gazing at the stars, if that happens to be, you know, a, a thing that's a place that you are. Um, so, you know, there's those possibilities. And then when you return to your home, then you have that opportunity to bring all that energy back with you. And if you're tired when you first get back, right, you still don't. Maybe you're like, oh, I'm, I'm tired. We can't. I'm exhausted. But um, then you could still try to come back in and, and have this beautiful energy uh, and, and just share in a beautiful moment um, as you've returned to that space. So hopefully there's been some really interesting pieces here. Yes, there's been a lot of great stuff here, a lot of great combinations that we've thrown at you um, to get your travel, um, your intimacy during your travel, your love making during travel, or, or if you're traveling apart, right in line, and so that you guys can bring amazing energy into this and this amazing metaphysical, spiritual practice into your love making. Um, you know, it's it's wonderful. I mean, I can speak from experience that when you when you do these things, it makes your